and introduce uh, this field scene right here, which uh, you'll notice is a little boring. There's just a, a rock out here and a lot of sand and a small fish is swimming. And there's really not very much happening in this image for quite a long time until now. You see here this uh, amazing octopus has been on that rock all the time and now it's gone from fully camouflaged to highly conspicuous swimming away and you watch here it now spreads its web all over makes itself look larger than it really is using a high contrast patterning with a large dark eye and in reverse you really get a better feel for the dynamics or what are happening watch this ring develop around the eye that's five million chromatophore organs innervated directly from the brain and now you see the patterning occurring in the skin right here and then I draw your attention right here to the smooth outline of the body and you notice that it goes three-dimensional as well. So in reverse you really see the dynamics of what's happening in many important features that really represent camouflage in many animals and dynamic camouflage in this one. So if we look at this carefully, the animal's gone from highly conspicuous to highly camouflaged. And in this case, we call this a high fidelity match, which is to say it looks a lot like the pattern, the posture, the intensity, the color, and even the 3D skin texture of the calcareous algae that's on the rock here. Now, a lot of people think this is what camouflage is, looking exactly like the background. But I want to point out a few features that would bring that idea into question. First, I want to point out that right here, if you look in this image, one of, this octopus can go anywhere on a coral reef or a kelp forest and camouflage. It doesn't matter if it's a fully developed coral reef like you see in the top left corner or anything in between. So these animals can go where they want essentially. They can develop the camouflage that's needed for that particular background. So camouflage is about visual perception. How does the octopus view that background and make this complicated choice? How does the brain control the skin to produce such a diversity of these visual illusions? And there are many similar questions that one can ask relative to this behavior.